love that sound. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a professional chef over at the Institute of Culinary Education, and these are my $220 fish and chips ingredients. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm a home cook, and these are my $19 fish and chips. Yo, my man. Hey, hey. I knew that would happen. Oh, okay. I can work with this. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to be lobster. So the fish and chips that I was going to make were going to be very special. I had a very lovely black sea bass. What is this? A trout? And a fresh caught Maine lobster. Hello, sir. Seasoned with citrus and fennel pollen and all these bright notes. All within an exquisite champagne tempura batter. A <laughs> served with russet potatoes, lemon aioli, fried shiso leaves, and a wasabi tobiko. <laughs> this is great. This is really great. Man, it was going to be amazing. Now with Beth's recipe, I have ingredients here that you can find in almost any grocery store. The fish and chips that I usually make are pretty straightforward. These might be on the simpler side, but with a little technique, we can make something very special. I'd say this cost maybe $18. So 19, you know, I was in that ballpark. I was pretty close. $300, $220. Even the lobster thinks that's ridiculous. Now, fish and chips is British street food. Even though it's a simple dish, really pay attention to all your moves and all your steps. Here's Chef Chris's recipe book. All ingredients, no instructions. So I sent Beth a whole black sea bass, and she's going to have to butcher that bad boy. I'm hoping that Rose is going to be available to give me some guidelines about filleting that fish. Hey, Rose. Hi, Beth. How are you? We have to start with the black sea bass. How do I? I've never filleted a fish. Well, you're talking to Rosemary Trout, so good call. <laughs> First thing you're going to do is take a really nice sharp set of scissors on the belly, the underside of the fish, you're gonna snip right through there, and then put your scissors in, snip again, and you're gonna be able to pull the guts out. Yikes! I'm butchering these guts. <laughs> then you're gonna take a slit, starting right behind the head, along, there's like a backbone in essence, all the way down to the tail. This takes practice. Slowly, but with a nice sweeping motion, slice in towards the belly of the fish, and you're gonna follow along the bones. It's gonna be fine. Second side is gonna be better, I hope. This is an expensive fish. I think that's better. Then you've gotta take the skin off. So you're gonna take the fillets, skin side down on your board, and at the tail end, slice a little bit on the diagonal away from the skin, then use your fingers to anchor the skin down and really firmly go down the rest of that fish along the skin. It's not pretty, but it's gonna be battered, so it's gonna be great. You're also gonna wanna look for the pin bones, so you're gonna cut those out as well. Even if you can't see the bones, you can certainly feel them. There we go, filleted black sea bass. So Beth has sent me some beautiful haddock fillets. It's widely used in fish and chips. You can see where the bones used to be. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. And right away, you can kind of see the thickness of where it's thicker here and thinner here. So on the thick pieces, I'll do about an inch. What I'm looking for is the area of the fish to be equal. Lobster time. As you can see, my lobster is red. We boiled it for this recipe. All I need is the claw and the tail meat. First, the tail meat. Twist. I'm gonna use the scissor to just snip down the back. Nice tail. Try to get it all out in one piece. Easy, easy. Nice. Now that the fish is prepped, we're gonna make a citrus dry rub. In front of me, I have some really basic ingredients. I have some lemon, I have some paprika and have some garlic powder. So instead of adding these to our batter, we're gonna make a very unique dry rub. 
I've never done this before. Now, I prefer dry marinade over wet marinade because in the end, you get a much crispier product. So I'm gonna zest my lemon. Zest some orange, lime. Some garlic powder. I like paprika a lot. The flavor is going to really extend itself once heat is involved. Fennel pollen. Mmm, smells like licorice. Fennel pollen, what that is, it's the flower part of the fennel plant. And as it's drying, that fennel flavor really intensifies. I don't think I want a lot of this. Add a little bit of kosher salt. It smells wonderful. Let's get this on the fish. Make sure that you're really getting all the sides. And I put these into my vacuum sealer bag. And what that's going to do is compress the flavors directly into the fish a little bit faster. So this will now go into the refrigerator as I prepare all the other ingredients. Now we're gonna make an aioli, but not just any aioli. A lemon garlic wasabi tobiko aioli. Thank you, Chef Chris, for not insisting that I make my own mayo. I appreciate that. So we're just gonna mix everything together. So what we're about to do now is a basic mayonnaise. It's definitely one of the mother sauces that you should master as you go down this journey of cooking. So I'm gonna take some eggs, and really all that I want are the yolks. And I'm going to whip enough air into the yolks so that as you drizzle it away, it leaves a ribbon on the rest of the yolk. Sir Kensington's mayonnaise, ooh la la. French Dijon mustard, nothing but the best. Some garlic, some caviar. Might as well not scrimp on this. What does this taste like? That horseradishy, wasabi kind of flavor, it brightens up that whole dish. Oh, that's great. It's got a nice kick from the wasabi. So from here, I'm gonna add some zest. The lemon juice is great. You know, it has the acidity that we need, but the zest really brings forth that flavor. Slowly, I'll add my oil. And then you'll see it come together. A little salt. Taste. Time for chips. So Beth sent me some beautiful russet potatoes. Since we're stepping it up a little bit, I'm gonna make tater tots. Why not? I know that Chef Chris is looking for a really thin sliced potato. I think the only way I can do that is with a mandolin. One thing you can do is be really careful with the mandolin, put a wet towel down so it anchors it so it doesn't slide around. An eighth of an inch. There's no way that I could cut this with a knife. Perfect slices. I'm gonna put them in the water so that I rinse the starch off. They will fry better that way. And I'm gonna leave these in this water for about an hour. So right away, I have a pot of cold water on. I turned it on, and I'm going to peel my potatoes, and I'll leave these in here for anywhere between nine and 12 minutes. My potatoes have been soaking for an hour, so you can see the cloudy water is the starch that came off the potatoes. So now I'm just gonna cook them until I can pierce them easily with this cake tester. Nice. I think they might be done. Blanched chips. All right, so I got the potatoes out of the water. They're strained. So right away, I'm gonna start to grate them on a box grater. They're not 100% cooked through. Still a little gummy, still a little warm to the touch. I'm gonna just add a little bit of salt and pepper to them. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of flour just to bring it all together. Just put a little bit of oil so that the potatoes don't really stick to your hand and then you can really put the tots together. So you wanna squeeze and form. Just keep that going. And now I'm gonna make just plain egg whites to dip the chips in. That one didn't work. Froth up my whites. This is cornstarch I'm adding to my all-purpose flour and salt. Put all the chips in the whites. Gonna get all the potatoes coated in the flour mixture. Messy business. But I'm sure if it's Chef Chris's recipe, it's gonna taste delicious. 
We got the hot oil that's rocking at 350, and I'm gonna add them in slowly, you know, a little bit at a time. Here we go. So Beth is gonna have the advantage of having the deep fryer, which is gonna control the temperature for her. Still, pay attention to that hot oil. Don't overfill the fryer. These are heavenly. And then once they're out, you want to season them almost right away. Togarashi? Togarashi is a Japanese spice that I like to use. It's salty, it's sometimes a little hot, it's sometimes a little bit sweet, has some sesame in there, it's wonderful. Time to make the tempura batter, not just any tempura batter, a champagne tempura batter. So tempura batter is going to be a lighter kind of batter, and that's why you want to add bubbles to it. You know, she gave me this nice Guinness stout. I think she was gonna drink it, but I'm gonna use it in the batter. I'm going to do all the dry ingredients first. Flour, baking powder, salt, very nice garlic batter. Two eggs. I love that sound. I'm going for a liquidy batter. Certainly have to save some for later. I'm gonna add all of my wet first. Now why I do that, because that way you can kind of control how much of the dry ingredients that you're putting in. And it doesn't get all clumpy, it stays smooth. A little bit of salt, paprika, some garlic. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge because having a cold batter is so important. And uh, one trick that you can do when you're doing tempura, you can take a couple ice cubes and you can throw that right into the batter. What that's going to do is lower that temp, you get maximum crunch, crispness, crackly, crackly all the way through. Shiso leaves first. Gonna dip them in the tempura batter. Shiso leaf. Get some lemon in here. These lemons were blanched ahead of time. Beauty. My fish. So this has been in the fridge now for about maybe 30, 40 minutes. The flavors are great. It's ready to go. Our dry rub has adhered to the lobster. In the dredge. You can see that I'm dragging it into the hot oil. I'm letting a crust form before I let go. Because if you drop it, it'll stick to the bottom of the pan. And you don't want that. We don't have to cook the lobster very long because the lobster was steamed. The fish, on the other hand, we're gonna have to cook that a little longer. This is looking fabulous. It's crispy. It's exactly where you want it to be. Salt, togarashi. It's time to plate. Because it is street food, and the way they do it over there, I'm gonna do it with a little bit of a newspaper. Artisan malt vinegar. Gotta have that malt vinegar in there, boom. And our aioli. I think I'll start with the potatoes on the paper. Beautiful claw. Fish and tot. Black sea bass. Fish and tot. A shiso leaf and some lemon. And there you have it. This is my take on Beth's classic fish and chips recipe. Boom. And this is my take on Chef Chris's fish and chips recipe. Chris, hey, look. how are you? <laughs> Beth, what's happening? Well, so good to see you in person. Yes. I can't wait to taste what you made. Awesome. Wow. Look at that. That looks amazing. I can't believe that you did this with mine. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. What are these? Tater, tater tots. tots. Ooh. Crispy on the outside, melting your Ooh. mouth on the inside, right? What is that? A really simple lemon mayonnaise. That's fabulous. Mm. Very bright. Let's try this fish. Okay. This was done with the beer batter. So you can taste all that malty, all that yeastiness. Mm. Right? Did you drink any of the beer? I did not drink. I, I did, did not. drink the champagne. <laughs> I was hoping you yeah, would. I did drink the champagne. <laughs> She's so leaves. Isn't it beautiful? Where mm. did you get this from? Believe it or not, some of this grows in my backyard. No. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nice and crispy. Almost like a distant cousin to basil. It's so neat. Here's oh, it's great. Let's try that wasabi. Aioli. Mmm. Nothing like a little lobster, right? <laughs> Lobster I'm good at. The bass, 
I didn't do a great job with the filleting, mm. but because it's batter dipped, you can't tell. You can't go anything. wrong. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I think I'm gonna try to sneak that bottle out of here. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. Don't don't say nothing. Mm.